Okay, so it's my job to welcome you all on behalf of Polar Horizons to your first official seminar. Um, these are going to be roughly monthly, but a little bit more than that in the beginning. And we're very lucky to have Emily back, who was originally planned to speak at the launch event, um, but technical difficulties defeated us on that occasion. But it is a brilliant thing because Emily went on the Mosaic expedition, which she's going to tell you all about and her role in that. And it's such an epic expedition that it probably deserves more than a 10 minute slot that it had anyway. So emily has got as long as she needs to tell you, hopefully a bit more about what she got up to on that expedition to the Arctic and all the excitement involved. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Emily and hopefully things will all go fine from this point onwards. Okay, hello again. Um, I'm still Emily. Um, I'm still a heterosexual cis woman with long blonde hair and brown eyes. Um, wears glasses when she looks at the screen. Um, and now, um, yeah, with all technical hiccups overcome, I'm really glad to tell you about my involvement in. Um, Mosaic. Um, someone actually um, during the expedition uh, tried to well, ask people what it stood, stood for, the acronym, and nobody really could remember. They just scanned for multidisciplinary drifting observatory for the study of the Arctic climate. So that is quite a mouthful. Um, you can probably understand why nobody can remember that, but go back it's the all in, in a nutshell. I'm one of the few people here, or increasing number of people here at Bath, um, who work in both hemisphere and, um, yeah, go back. that's how I got involved in working in the Arctic and um, before I came to back, I had worked in the Arctic and in the, on um, Polaska and the German research icebreaker before. So, um, that probably predetermined me. Um, after kind of 10 years of planning, Monkey took place um, between September 2019 and October 2020. And I was one of the people who were involved in the setup phase. That means I joined Polaska in Tromsø, and we were sailing with her into the Arctic sea ice. Um, then looking for a flow, we were spending significant time um, actually looking at satellite imaging and sending the helicopter um, out to look for a suitable flow. And then um, actually taking up all the equipment at the beginning of the one year long drift. In the context of Polar Horizon, um, during my time on board, there were 60 scientists and 40 crew. Of the 60 scientists, nine were female. Two out of the 60 had um, some Asian background. There was no black scientist on board. No one had a visible disability. And while statistically speaking, it's very likely that there was an LGBTQ person on board. Um, I, I don't know. Um, so nobody openly um, was of um, anything other than heterosexual. Second point of Monique as I mentioned before, was the German research icebreaker Polaska and um, of being thrown into the sea ice, um, of, as you can see in this um, cartoon here for one year. It was where um, thinking Asian um, and crew exchange was scheduled um, roughly every two months. Um, with the help of additional icebreakers from Russia, China, and Sweden. Um, 
but um, you came out from COVID. Um, um, Emily, so can I just interrupt? Are your slides supposed to be changing? No, not yet. Perfect. That's right. I'm just checking. <laughs> um, no, I've got too much time, you know. Um, so, where was I? Um, but yeah, as you can imagine, from COVID, um, play havoc with all the, the play, um, plan and back in, um, we quite a lot of improving flexibility from everyone. When we try to split into five areas, we have atmosphere here, we have the sea ice and snow team, the ocean team, ecosystem team, Biochemical selection and then, um, of, I think, um, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Um, so both are the main five, um, teams, but none of the teams really could do the work without the others. And the big scientific question, anyway, of can only be addressed by working together. And this is what the flow looks in another cartoon and um, of gives you an idea of all the um, different types of instrumentation from upward looking um, like um, a weather station, um, this can be Amberg of an electromagnetic um, instrument that measures sea ice thickness. You have um, various gliders and UAVs um, underneath the ice. Um, we had a remote um, uh, network of um, boys and some of the boys um, had got a lot of instrumentation gangling down into the ocean. Um, yeah, people going with skiing backwards and forward. Um, Everything was happening really. Weather balloon here. Um, and this gives you an overview of um, the whole thing in numbers. Um, we had egg temperature down to minus 42. Fortunately, not while I was on board. <clears throat> on board, um, <clears throat> it took 389 days. Um, for Polaska to return at the end um, of the expedition. We had about five or six kilometers of power and network cable on the ice. Um, and measurements were taken from Team Ocean way below the sea level of 4,197 meters was their um, lowest level um, they measured. And with weather balloons, we went up to 36 kilometers into the atmosphere. Um, altogether, there were 440 crew scientists and ship crew on board who ate <coughs> estimated um, 4,050 eggs, 43 kilograms of mortella, 680 kilograms of potatoes per month. And we collected um, 135 terabyte of data. Um, and we used um, six diesel, even though we weren't going anywhere. Um, but um, got off to keep everything running, keep the heating on, um, and go power <clears throat> some of the instrument on board. But if you compare that, that's the equivalent of six hour um, output um, of in um, carbon dioxide emission, the equivalent to six hour output of so many large coal power, coal fire power plant. So um, it's not, you know, when you think about a ship thrown into the arc, you think, oh, that must be a massive carbon footprint, but actually, um, yeah. It was very efficient in that way. Another um, highlight I want to make is um, um, here. This was um, 
the furthest north any ship has got under its own steam during Arctic winter was the Kapitan Granitsin, who um, um, came to Polaska to resupply. Um, and at the point, Polaska was the furthest ship any, any ship had been um, north on of been drifting. And the whole situation went back. Um, Kapitan Granitsin um, her journey to Polaska to resupply took instead of four weeks, almost uh, took four weeks instead of two weeks. And the consequence that meant that when Kapitan Granitsin at the at the end of the resupply and cruise came, um, came out of the ice, she had to be met by yet another unscheduled icebreaker to resupply her with fuel and um, and food for for the people on board. So it's just an example of how difficult the logistics of this expedition were and how unpredictable and um, and just how important international co collaboration is and um, and you know, that nations um, are willing to you know, basically export notice and um, change their plan to make resources and ships available. You now that was really, really great. So that was um, my personal timeline of Mosaic. I arrived in Tromsø with two colleagues from Bath in, in the middle of September. We had um, three days to take things up in port, but it's of certain things you can't do on a moving ship. Um, so you better do them um, while Polaska was still in Tromsø. Um, then on the 20th, 20th of September, there was a big farewell party um, for Polaska and, and the Russian icebreaker Fyodorov, academic Fyodorov. She went along into the ice with Polaska, but while Polaska was um, setting up instruments on the central flow, academic Fyodorov um, distributed the, um, the boys that I um, mentioned earlier in the distributed um, network for all within 50 kilometers around the, the central flow. And then, um, yeah. So with Polaskan, we um, arrived at what would then be the flow, well, the home for one year um, on October the 4th. And that's then of um, Egon Skarke uh, taking up the infrastructure, um, deciding what equipment would go where, um, laying the power cables, making all the tripods that kept the power and network cables out of the ice because you can't uh, lay them down on the ice because then they would melt and freeze into the ice. So, uh, that all had to be done we had about two weeks, and then um, the captain of the academic fuel of came back from deploying the distributed network, and he got um, sixty feet because he kind of looked at the CI development and said, um, we need to go now because um, if we don't go soon, we'll have two ships thrown into the ice. Um, I, at that point, joined the academic fuel off and started the journey back to Tromsø. I didn't do very much on that journey. That was very much sleep, eat, sleep, repeat. And after nine days, I was back in Tromsø. Um, so this is where the flow, where the adventure started on the 4th of October. We were three, three thousand, almost three, three and a half thousand kilometers from from her. We were nine time zones away from the UK. We had a 50 kilobyte email limit and um, transfer was by a satellite link or a bit unpredictable. Um, 
the sun set for the first time at the location on October the 5th, but it was cloudy that day, so the actual, I think we saw the sun for the last time on October the 2nd. And someone pointed out that at that point, the closest other humans were the crew of the ISS in space. Now that felt very, very remote. And it also meant that communication with, um, back with bus um, for any troubleshooting was very, very difficult because of the time zone. And if something's wrong, you can't take a photo and say, this is what it looks like. Is this what it should look like? Um, yeah, it, it felt a long way away from home. I think of what happened after that, um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, so the different legs and COVID meant that um, the rift had to be interrupted at some point um, to do a crew exchange um, near long near being um, off of um, Svalbard and then Polanski went back into the eye to another flow before he then um, sailed back to Bremerhaven in October. Thank you, thank you. This is what the flow looked like on another cartoon and what it looked like um, when I was there. You see Pulaskan here, kilometers of power cable on their tripod. This is of Mac City where all the meteorological equipment was. Um, this is of where originally Ocean City was. And then we had off here along this league, um, a hole where um, the remote, the operated vehicle um, was launched into the ice or into the water underneath the ice. We had, well, my project had bus, uh, scuff here near Mexico. At the um, bow of the ship, we had a container that we turned back turned into a lab, and we had um, equipment on on the clothes nest. I'll tell you more about that later. But um, just of due, due to ice dynamics, severe storm, cracks opening, lips forming, and just everything moving because ice has moved on water. Um, this is really exactly a snapshot and already two months later um, someone told me that I wouldn't recognize the flow, um, flow again. Um, yeah, also helicopter landing site, um, which come. it's important later because that's how I got onto the academic field of um, And I'll show you um, more about our instrumentation on the eye at Mexico and in the lab container and on the closeness. But so, yes, this is of all the um, directions where polar bears came from. So, um, we all, always, when working on the eye, we had um, polar bear guards with rifles and signal flares. And certainly um, during the check up phase when I was working on the eye, we were um, visited by polar bears almost every day. Fortunately, not always when we were on the eye, some kind of after dinner time, and then it was quite nice um, to go outside and watch them. But when you were on the ice and the ship swarm blue and then you had to drop everything, get on the ski and get back to the ship, that was rather inconvenient. So I mentioned um, that we had, um, well, first of all, actually, what I was doing there or why I was there is um, a project <clears throat> with the acronym Sassy Klim, and we were looking, or are still looking at sea salt aerosols above Arctic sea ice, and 
exhaust and personal and climate impact. Um, and it's basically fecal aerosol are important for the formation um, of clouds and for their life cycle. And clouds, again, are important um, for the radiation balance um, between what's coming in, not necessarily in polar night, but um, during polar day and what is not released um, from open water, from um, the surface. In, in the container, we had an ice nucleic um, particle counter, we had an optical particle counter, we sample air um, through low volume filter and high volume filter. On the close net, we had um, a cloud aerosol and spe um, precipitation particle um, spectrometer. Um, this is an instrument that is usually flying underneath an aircraft, um, but one of our engineers modified that um, so that it would turn into the wind. Um, of, um, and work on, on a ship. On the ice floor, we had um, a balloon packet that would fly underneath a covered balloon and um, similar to what we had in the container, but in minutes here, a low volume filter sampler and an optical particle counter. And then on the ice of at Mexico, we had rocket snaps that um, you see look like rockets and collect blowing snow and a snow particle counter on a mass at two levels. Here you can kind of balance um, how much snow particles are lofted by wind when you have blowing snow and you have um, precipitating snow. And in connection and collaboration with the um, snow and sea ice team, um, Weekly um, snow picks with dark and um, snow samples were taken for the physical and chemical property of, of snow. This is of the container. We used it originally as, or initially as um, packing container. So all the instrumentation was in there together with um, instrument and cargo of two other projects. Um, then it was off, um, yeah, that was off in the backyard at Bath and was collected with a um, crane and put on a low logger and um, off it goes um, all the way to Romsu, where um, I then used the, the time from Romsu until we arrived at the flow, could turn it into a nice lab on lab on the ship. You know, I guess in every single space is of you to store empty or full box, like a box full of lab equipment. We had a flow hook there to change the high volume and low volume figure samples spare clothing underneath there. Mm. This is the display of the um, optical particle counter which is going, going in, like, in the roof of the container up there. And that inlet also fit, um, feeds into the low volume particle counter. This is really a, a very neat piece of quick um, kit because it automatically same filter, you have the two card mix um, here, and, it, and, of, and you can program it to um, sample a new filter or even a blank filter um, according to your schedule, like you're programming. Very nice. This is the high volume um, filter sampler, which um, was fed to a different inlet in the roof. But um, that through 800 liters of air per minute, and that was of so cold that you had um, 
of congregation speaking on on the cubing there. They can be um, clouding aerosol spectrometer on the closeness. We here the focus of of it um, in pork in concert and what became view or like of being the same instrument on, on the flow. Um, this is a chronic anemometer, um, which we use to um, point the, um, the, the caps into the airflow. Um, so it, can simulate. it only works when you simulate but on the aircraft and it cuts off the, the airspeed flowing through. And the nice thing about this program is that it shows that the heater could keep everything, including the, the motor that um, rotates the caps probe, like all working, while everything else is coated with ice, um, the caps are free of ice. This is the prototype of the um, balloon package. Got a pump here, um, the filter sampler here, a flow maker, battery pack, um, the optical particle conker here. And this on the right here is a focal not during motor eat of the Kazakh balloon, um, we can call Miss Piggy. Um, which um, this box then was attached to, and we could um, take profile measurement or kind of have it tethered at a certain height, like a one kilometer high, and measure for a couple of hours, and then get the box back and exchange the filter and um, download the data um, from the logger. And last but not least, uh, hmm, that's taking a while. Um, I'm wait, I've got a swirling curve while it's moving from one side to the next, or from one slide to the next. Um, in anticipation, I can tell you that the Next slide is um, has a photo of the um, of the implementation at Mexico. Um, PowerPoint is not responding. Uh, I like to close that and restart. Yeah, you can do that. Give it a go. <laughs> Otherwise, you can you can uh, tell us with words. We'll imagine it. Oh no, I don't want to report the problem, Microsoft. But I, I'm not given the option. Uh, right, off we go again. Um, but yes, the next slide will be um, next hickey where um. One focal is of the, the mask where our um, small particle conquest were um, installed on. Um, and that was actually taken a day after I left the flow. And my small particle conquest are on the mask. The mask is still on the ground um, to be erected the next day. And you see next, uh, next to um, the mask already a crack that developed um, overnight, um, which nobody predicted. Um, it fortunately then um, throws over again um, very soon, but it would have been quite a problem if that had turned into something wider. There we are. Mm. 
If it doesn't cooperate, I'm no, no, it, it can again. Um, hang on, it will, it will, it can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, otherwise, it, yeah, 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 we can we can break for questions as well. So, uh, yeah. however, you feel like, but go, go, give it a go. Yeah, all I need to do is here again. Um, no, we should be back on. We are great. Very good. We yeah. um you see I know you get a link up point again. Yeah, must be erected um a gay lake um we had the snow parking conquer. Um, at half a meter above the surface, and then again another one at ten meter. Um, yeah, and they erect it back the next day. And here the crack, like of open. Um, and just of yeah, a lot of people have said, and I agree that this was probably the last, maybe the last year for more it could be possible or. Um, definitely a year, if it had been scheduled for a year earlier, it would have been easier to find a suitable flow. Um, because this flow that we chose now um, was the only one in that area um, that had ice that had survived one summer. So you distinguish between first year ice and working year ice. And first year ice, you've got the, the sea ice that forms back in that year. And working year ice is usually ice that um, has survived a number of summers and gets thicker and thicker. But um, there was nothing like um, that in, in that area. Um, so what we this, what we chose as the flow was of the best we had, but it was certainly not optimal. Yeah. Yeah. And here is um, me in orange and blue and Malena, um, one of my colleagues, um, um, establishing the mass for the rocket map that I mentioned earlier, that um, collect of Throwing into the snow, uh, uh, into the wind, and collect um, blowing snow at different heights. Um, and then of one once a week or after a major um, wind event, someone would go and empty the rocket cap and weigh weigh the snow. Um, and so you can see how much blowing snow you have close to the surface and how much get of lifting up. Um, higher above the surface um, and how that depends on, on the wind speed. Yeah, and um, I mentioned polar bears. And, um, I can take a good polar bear, um, polar bear folk, well, this one that a colleague from RV took, um, this is a cup. Um, and, with its mother, it visited us almost every day for a week or so, and they were quite in inquisitive. Um, they weren't faced by us being there or by um, all the equipment. They were just really curious and thought, well, what's all that about? And, um, and it was really, well, from the safety of the ship, it really nice to see them, to watch them, um, but it also, yeah, was kind of another indicator of um, humans are really not meant to be there. <laughs> yeah. 
not not a, a play where a human can live. Um, yeah. And that would be the, the wisdom sculpture um, and we now I of a class of photos um, from the return journey um, on board academic funeral. Of, um, yeah, I, I really spent three days only sleeping and eating. Um, but um, yeah, there were amazing moments too. Um, first of all, there was getting from Pulaski and across the eye and through this helicopter landing site early in the morning on ski goof. Then we had to put lanterns um, or torch <coughs> onto the ice to mark the helicopter landing site. And the helicopter from Fjordorov came over to collect us in our luggage. We got a, an expert tour because they were quite interested in uh, wrecking the sea ice and seeing where it would be a good way for um, Fjordorov to get um, to leave the flow, the area of the flow again. Um, but yeah, and we saw Northern Lights on the way back. Um, we saw bioluminescence, um, which I think is not something a lot of people know about of in, from in, in in polar water, so, um, it got usually connected to warm water. Um, that was like, absolutely stunning. Um, then open water was amazing. The sun, when it came out again for the first time, and it felt like the ship might be lifting because everybody was of rushing to one side of, of, the, um, of the ship. Um, seeing landscape for the first time again. Um, another tip of skating past in at the horizon of other people. Um, yeah, you know, out of reach, but good people. Um, yeah, and then from the, again, um, fortunately a small city, not too many people. But yeah, and, and a hotel room all myself after having shared a cabin first on Polaska with um, three other women and then um, on Fjordorov with um, one other woman. Yeah, yeah amazing um, key on, on Fjordorov for every meal and break time on each of the tables. There was you know, a different beautiful um, kettle with key that you would drink out of glass. Mm -hmm. A handwritten menu, which got, was very meaty. Um, yeah, and got of, um, more and more monotonous, but closer we got to some group. Sometimes dessert was above chocolate for everyone. Um, yeah. That was um, the we need to get rid of all alcohol evening because we weren't allowed to take any alcohol um, or have any alcohol on board when we anchor Norwegian water again. Some contributed more than others to the annihilation of that. Yeah, the first can right? or the first can be smaller can again. Lots of crossword and tea drinking and biscuit eating. And finally, um, that was my playing home and and that had freak of nun um on on the tail thing and I found that kind of really really moving um because of all the the whole idea of um freezing in an icebreaker into the ice and drifting across the Arctic sea ice um, was originally his idea and um, of over 100 years ago um, he gave back for the first time with um, his ship the Fram. So yeah, thank you very much um, and now I'm going to stop sharing the slide and I'm happy to 
unhanging question. Cool. Thank you very much, Amelie. And I think, Kirby, if you want to stop recording. <laughs>